right. So now we can start the lesson. Okay. So uh, good morning, everyone. So this morning we're going to learn about the uh, two point three. Okay, our parallel series and parallel circuit. Okay. So for my school students, I hope that you are uh, in front of the computer with your module. Okay, for the other school students, if you have your own school module, you also can refer it. Right, so for the series and parallel circuit. Okay, series and parallel circuit, actually you already have the uh, basic in your PT3. Okay, but the basic you learn is very simple. It's just not, you just have to learn how to differentiate between series and parallel circuit. But when you come to the SPM, we will learn more uh, detail and deep in color the calculations. Uh, some of the questions, the calculation may be a bit complicated. So that's why you need to know how to apply the formula. Okay, especially the formula to differentiate between series and parallel circuit. Okay, so as you can see here, there are the two uh, basic type of the series and parallel circuit. So why the circuit is a series or parallel? We are Look at the connections on the bar or either the resistor okay, or any conductor. Even the battery also, we have to differentiate whether the battery connected is a series or parallel. Yes. When it's a series, as you can see on the left hand side here, this is the one that we call it series connection, which is one line up the next one. It's just like you line up at the school canteen one by one. This one we call it series. Okay. But once you line up in the different row, like the example on the right hand side here, you line up on the different row, and only that you connect with the same connection point, same connection point. I show you here now. Same connection point, point A, point B. Okay, by the three different bar here. Right, one, two, three. So this type of connection we call it parallel circuit. Okay, this one just only the basic series and parallel. It can be more than three, more than four, more than five. But why the ligand show you only three? Uh, actually, because of the limitation of SPN syllabus. By right, the question given during the exam, there's only up to three conductor. But now that I notice as there are many years, actually the question given more than that. So it means that they don't really follow the syllabus. So they give you a one question. So it means you have to prepare for it. It's not only limited to three uh, conductor in the series and parallel circuit. Because when the limit with the three series of parallel circuit, the combination series and parallel is very really limited. If you have only three conductor, you see, you are given only three conductors. Let's say I give you uh, for the three resistors. One, two, three. Okay. And the three parallel. One, two, three. So if I want to combine it, see this in parallel, so I may arrange it like this. One, Two, three, or one, two, and another pedal, three, like this. Right. So I think there's only limited some uh, series and parallel when they mix it together. So the question can be modified, it's very, very limited. So that's why when you go to a pass here, sometimes it will give you more than three conductor in the circuit for the arrangement series and parallel mixed together. Okay, I hope that you have no problem to differentiate series and parallel. Okay, so now we're going to learn the Dieter formula. Okay, so the Dieter formula, actually as I always tell in the class, if you are my class students, you should know that the formula given is not suddenly dropped from the sky or appeal in the moon. So you must have where is the formula come from? Okay. So, but anyway, SPA exam, it would ask you 
ask you to prove how is the formula and why the formula is given like that. Okay, there's not the standard SPM. But anyway, I hope that you're able to learn why the formula given like that for the CD circuit, given like that for the parallel circuit. Uh, for those just join the meeting, please turn off your mind. Thank you. Okay, so to understand the formula uh, calculations for the series and parallel circuits, you need to recall back what you have learned in the previous lesson for the Ohm's law. In the Ohm's law, you learn the relationship between voltage and the current, which is an identity proportional. Okay. With best of this relationship, when you rearrange it, okay, you get the V over I equal to one constant value. And this constant value we call it as a resistance, as is already fixed. So that's why, based on that, you have the V over I is equal to constant value R. And from here, we get the equation V equal to I R. Okay. So when you learn about the series and parallel circuit, you need to apply this V equal to I R to do the calculation, especially to find the effective resistance. Why we need to know the effective resistance? Because when the connection of circuit series of parallel, okay, it will affect the resistance in the circuit itself. So there's a main objective that you learn series and parallel circuit to know what is the effective resistance, to know how to do the calculation to find the effective resistance of the circuit. There's a first main objective you learn series and after you know how to differentiate series and parallel circuit. So now with this formula, we see how we are going to apply this operation in the series circuit. So now our first focus will be on series circuit. Okay, I give you one simple series circuit here with the two R1 and R2. Connected with the batteries. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry for the disturbing. Okay. Nice. And all So, okay. So, our and our two. Okay. How we get to know about the effective R? Okay. If you look at the formula, if you look at the formula here, as given in the reference book or what? Okay. So, to calculate the effective R in the C circuit, it's just total whatever R that you have. R1, R2, plus R3, right? Okay. But actually, why is like that? So this V equal to IR, the V equal to IR here, is talking about what happens on the one simple circuit. Okay. At the same time, if you connect a uh, M method here, so you will have the reading and with the resistance here you have the R. The battery is a V. So the relationship between the these three quantity is the one that obey the Ohm's law. So we have the connection uh, relationship between the these three quantity will be V equal to I R. Okay. So that's why when you have a series circuit, so we have the two different R, then you have to find what is their effective R means we're going to combine it in this circuit as a one simple R. That's why this circuit, we should look it like the simplify it become the one basic system. This is what we call effective R. Okay. Based on that, this effective R, okay, as what you can see, when we combine it together, it should be equal to the this R1 plus R2. If you want to explain it in the simple way, it's like this. Why the CD circuit to calculate effective R is an R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on. They need line up together as a CD circuit. Okay, so that's what happened here. Okay, then based on this one, if you, if the question asks you to know, find out what is the V. 
What's a V1 across R1? What is a V2 across R2? Right? So, if you look at the uh, textbook or the reference book, it will straight away tell you, okay, V1 will equal to the I R1, and the V2 will equal to the I R2. So, for the, this equation, you will notice that I, it doesn't change. I remaining the same. Okay. Why it happened like that? So when look when we go back to the circuit, C circuit here, you notice that our color is released from the positive terminal here. After that, it will flow through the connections wire, connecting wire. So this connecting wire, because of the C circuit, it only made a one round. One group only. They got no other group of the color to split up into the two or three and so on. Just only one row. Okay, satu di satu pusingan sahaja. So that's why our current just only have one value. Our current only have one value. The last one split into V I two, I one, I three, and so on. Just only have one I. So that's why it's just only I. Okay. So when the I across R one here, so I multiply R one. I multiply R one. That's why we have the result of V one. Okay. And when the I multiply out to, there is a reason, the result of V2. Okay. So based on that, we're going to see what happened if the V1 plus V2. Okay. Because when you combine the um, circuit together, sorry, when you combine the resistor together as a one effective R, then it will come back to this basic circuit. Then only we left V. So this V is going to serve as a V across the battery here. That's why our V actually is equal to the V1 plus V2. So from here, we substitute back V1. We substitute back here V1 as a I R1. Plus V2 as a I R2. Then, when you simplify it, you will have, or, or you factorize it, you have, have I equal to uh, V equal to I multiplied R1 plus R2. Okay. And uh, this equation, if you com if you compare to the basic equation that we have here, which is for the most basic circuit is a V equal to I R. So from here, obviously you can see to find the effective R of a circuit, the R it should equal to R1 plus R2. Okay, it should equal to R1 plus R2. That is the reason why, or the simple explanation for you to understand. Why the series circuit R if it R must be R1 plus R2? And why in the simple series circuit our current only have one I? It doesn't have the I1 or I2 and so on. Okay, so this is the first thing you have to know. In the series circuit, the first thing you have to know is I is constant. This is only one value, and the effective R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus until the Rn. Depends on how many resistors that you have in connected in series, okay. and the V is to be equal to the V1 plus V2 plus. Depends on how many resistors that you have. So at the end, you plus Vn. Okay, so that is a, a formula calculation related to the series circuit. So if you want to learn the most basics only, which is only two resistors connected in series circuit, then you can simplify the formula, just focus it here. Why I equal to constant, R is R1 plus R2, V equal to V1 plus V2. You can just ignore the unlimited how many circuits are, are resistor connected in series. 
right? So that's why sometimes when you open the Latin school, you only see this basic formula, R1 plus R2, B1 plus B2, because they assume that the most basic CD circuit is a tool the system connected in series. But the question does, it's not always give you the system. It can be give you many, many the system and so on. Right? So anyway, that is the first part for the CD circuit. Okay, first. Yeah, this time again. 